Continuing with the social justice activism panels at South by Southwest, Not Gay Jared and I attended the My Body is Not Safe for Work Fat Pride Breakout Session to ask a few simple, medically accurate, if mildly triggering questions. Uh, but before that, it's important that you see the narrative they were using to set the stage. Concern trolling, I think, is a big thing in general in this space. And it's like, are you actually concerned? Do you actually compare, care at all about my well-being? Um, because if you did, maybe you wouldn't be harassing me because it's not great for my mental health. It's, it's the gateway to basically just saying, I don't like you, I don't like what I'm seeing. Um, we know that we aren't supposed to be mean to people. We, that's another very popular idea and a good one, that we're not supposed to bully, we're not supposed to call people names and wag fingers. So we express worry over them instead. But it all amounts to the same. It all amounts to the same as, don't, don't show me what you're showing me. But for me, it really is about just reclaiming it and saying, like, I'm fat, and the fact that you still find me attractive is your problem. If you see a fat girl online who hates herself and is in sweatpants and talking about how miserable she is and crying, people are much more likely to be supportive of her diet um, and her exercise. But when you're confident and you're saying, I love myself, and here I am in a bikini and I'm okay as I am, immediately people have you know, really strong feelings about that. Pause. So wait, you mean to say that when you're vulnerable and upset, people are kind and consoling and willing to offer supportive advice. But when you're arrogant and bombastic, people are put off? They've got some nerve on them. I, I'm also, uh, I don't know, voluptuous. <laughs> sure, I have really big boobs, I guess. <laughs> but um, I am fat and that's okay. You touched on something which I think is important earlier about healthcare, affordable access to healthcare yes. being, you know, uh, I think you said a, a human right. So in that sense, with the fact that people who are overweight, like myself, or obese, are three to seven times more likely to develop diabetes or cost $256 billion more per year, um, isn't that a concern of the taxpayer? Don't they have a right to have an opinion? And just like smoking, encourage healthier body styles if the taxpayer is involved in this decision. I mean, I mean, this is like obviously an incredibly nuanced conversation. I think it starts a lot younger and a lot earlier than by the time anyone has developed some of those issues or gained the weight. I think you can't talk about that without also talking about the food industry and corn subsidies and access to health care for prenatal care and early childhood intervention and education. You can't just talk about fat people have diabetes and have more likelihood to end up with d diseases that cost the taxpayer without talking about the entire approach to bodies, health, our access to food, water. Uh, Flint, Michigan still doesn't have clean water, hasn't for three years. Oh, so Flint, Michigan's tap water made you fat. Well, that explains it. If we see a statistical risk pool, mm -hmm. do we also agree that like insurance companies should have the right to discriminate in that sense? Based I do on not. I, I mean, I, I, I mean, none of us would agree that it's okay to discriminate against fat bodies up here, but if you are, you know, excluding people or penalizing people based on size, you are not just discriminating based on size, you're also discriminating based on, uh, you know, a number of things, including racial and ethnic backgrounds, for example. Wait, pause. Did she just insinuate that black people are fat? Yeah. None of us have an issue with promoting healthy lifestyles. I think in, case, in our case, it actually is a really big part of, of our identities. And Brantley, Nicolette, and I talk a lot about uh, we're both gluten-free, etc. because of our conditions. Oh, it's the gluten. That's the ticket. And that being said, I am very much a, uh, someone who wants to promote living in healthy, in healthy ways, but I don't equate that necessarily to a certain size. But there's like a 700% chance more likelihood of someone, you know, developing heart disease or diabetes. Of course. I could, it, Should it, we promote that, you know, for kids who are coming up? We agreed that- to lose yeah, weight, that's the No, we factor. should not promote to lose weight. We should promote we should. healthy behaviors. There's a, a much larger issue of the way we um, stigmatize bodies, the way they're approached in the medical and health industry, the way that the medical industrial complex is structured in general. Of course not. It must have been the gluten and what have you. Of course, that statement begs the question as to just how the medical industrial complex uh, managed to so effectively target exclusively these women. But there wasn't enough time to get into that, so Not Gay Jared had a question of his own. I appreciate putting this on. I'm just probably learning a lot. Great. Um, question for you. Uh, I just you talked about some studies and 
I'm sure uh, there's probably a lot of studies out there, but there's been several studies that show that um, when polling men, uh, for instance, this one held in New South Wales in Sydney, the study involved almost 60,000 60, volunteers rating almost 1,000 variations of the female figure, and what the discovery was was that um, more attractive ones are almost always tall uh, and, and thinner rather than large and curvy. Um, question for you is, is it possible that within uh, fighting the idea of body shaming, there's, a, there's actually a possibility of, of shaming natural male biology that prefers uh, thinner, leaner, um, healthier women. Well, <laughs> what about, I, I think it's, what it's about that survey that is natural male biology yeah. and not societal? Yeah. I think a lot of that is socialized. Um, I think a lot of our preferences are socialized. Are they that's, asking babies? Like that's babies? something that's really apparent when you go to other cultures and ask their preferences. Like our attraction is so much yeah, socialized. Of course it is. Um, to we found that this is actually true across generationally. The idea that people just or men just biologically are start come out of the womb attracted to thin, tall women is like ridiculous. Well, it's and also, I'm like, really it's offended by the two male also, comments. I mean, it's not surprising to me that the two white male guys. Can we have this woman's question, please? Yeah. Is it possible that there's no, not going to be a healthy <laughs> you're allowed, mother? You're allowed uh, to be attracted uh, to whoever you're attracted to. There's nothing wrong with that. If yeah. a, a person is not attracted to me because my body is larger, I don't care. There's a million of other people who are. Um, in fact, I wish fewer men well, would. What would you say to, to men I'm because you shame. feel shamed? And no, no, no nobody's shaming you no, for shaming liking you. thin women. That's not no, the problem. We don't care. But it's, yeah, I think it's okay. Well, so you can tell that it's wrong to not find certain body types. No, it's no, I'm not that's sure where that's, that's coming that's from. There's a magazine that they, they, uh, they, 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 yes. they modify. Sir, sir. Sir. Okay. The answer to your question is no. There's no shame in our Yes, please. But they came in here with the attention to, like, troll us, which is hilarious and not surprising. With the maximum triggering occurring, we had to get the hell out of there. But as cis white males, we wanted to ensure that we weren't wrong with our information. So we decided to sit down with a local doctor, Dr. Mike Simpson, to get his professional opinion. Uh, also, side note, we did have one other cameraman with us at that panel, but he got eaten. So now you're telling me what I am obligated to do by the oath that I took and what the government actually has on a checklist that I must discuss with you. The moment you get on the scale in my emergency room and you're over a certain basic metabolic index, that triggers a question on the electronic medical record, did you discuss weight control with this patient? Just like wow. if you say I'm a smoker, did you discuss smoking cessation? So okay. now you're telling me that I am trolling you. <laughs> Because I'm doing what I'm required to do. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, by the way, because of uh, the Affordable Care Act and many other governmental mm. restrictions, if I don't ask you that question, I don't get to bill for full price for that chart. Now, I don't care. I'm wow. not in this for the money. I am in it because I care about people's health. But don't accuse me of trolling when I'm telling you you are going to die. You're gonna. You're this guy really needs to check his MD privilege. Again, why does this matter? Because just like the anti-free speech panel we covered earlier this week, this entire fat pride movement is centered around controlling what people are allowed and are not allowed to say. When you categorize everything as hate speech, including medically correct assessments designed to keep you alive, you eliminate the ability for any conversation to take place. As you see here, even with issues that are literally life and death. But shh, don't tell anyone. That's just concern trolling. Hey, if you like this clip, you're like most of the internet. You have a short attention span, but it was taken from the full show. You can see it in a box playing next to me. Uh, that's once a week on Thursday's full one and a half hour show, or you can join the Mug Club uh, for the daily show. We have to take some of that off YouTube because they're monitoring us and censoring our words.